So ACMR has just released their new M4 rotary attachment and this thing is simple to use and it's definitely a very capable accessory that I'll tell you right now you're probably going to want on your laser. But the most interesting thing about this new tool isn't all of the gadgetry, it's the number of configuration options it offers. This M4 has many personalities, it can look like this, it can even look like this. So it can handle almost any rotary job you're going to have. So in this video, I'll tell you whether the ACMR P4 rotary is worth the money, and I'll even show you something that I'm not sure ACMR expected me to do. So let's dive in. Hey, Steve here, welcome back. Now, ACMR's had a rotary attachment, the M3, for quite a while, and it's been an okay rotary. It's just kind of typical of, of some of the other laser manufacturers. But they recently announced this M4, the four being four in one. Now, I do think they've underestimated the count of, of things that this rotary can do. And I'll show you at least four of them, but, but certainly there are others. And I was quite excited to try this because uh, it has so many different options. And uh, I wanted to make sure it worked not only with my Acmer P3, but some of the other lasers in my shop as well. Now, looking at some of the things in the box, you get a, the rotary itself with both a, a chuck and rollers. You get a connector to plug into the Acmer laser and then two different connectors for the two variants of stepper motors that are out there. You get some pins for the chuck. You get a different set of chuck teeth as well for, for larger items. And then two end rollers. Uh, the first one is the dual roller that you can use for longer items. And the second one actually rides on the, on the, uh, the T rail on the inside and uh, a level of course and then four mine actually came with four different uh, extenders that you can replace the legs on your ACMR laser with. So to get this set up we'll start by replacing the existing feet on the ACMR P3 by the new riser legs and you got to remove the original so you pull off the cap on the bottom and then turn out the screw it's pretty simple. Uh, if not a little tedious. The, the riser, there's two pieces to it. The first one is just the hollow tube and the second one is the one that screws into the laser. So you screw it in and you tighten the second piece on and put a cap on and you can repeat that for the other three legs and then you'll be ready to go. To get the rotary installed, take the R cable, which is the short one, and plug it into the front of the laser and then take the A cable, which is one of the two longer ones, and plug it into the stepper motor. This is if we're installing into an ACMR P3. Drop the rotary into the inside of the laser. Uh, it's actually inside my laser right there. Uh, and then plug the, the A cable into the R cable, and that connects it to the laser. And really, it's pretty straightforward to get things set up here. Next, I want to configure the software, uh, and to do that, I'm going to spin up into Lightburn and go to the rotary setup. Now, there's two options. You can, you can uh, use a chuck or a roller, and the M4 has both, but I'm going to use the, the chuck. I'm going to enable the rotary, and I'm going to mirror it because the chuck is backwards relative to the rollers. Now, for the Acmer P3, I'm going to use the Z or Z axis, but your laser may use the Y axis depending on what your laser is. You can hit the test button. Uh, you need to enter the number of millimeters per rotation, and in this case, uh, it's 122. So, so that's really all you have to do to set up the rotary. Uh, I'm going to just draw a circle on a, on a piece of pipe here. So a circle is 40 by 40 millimeters. And when I fire that over to the laser, I actually did two passes here, so you can actually see it move, otherwise it would be too quick. And then when I pull it off the laser, uh, to no surprise, you get a perfect circle wrapped around a tube, and that's exactly what you want. So before I jump to the next thing, I thought I'd do a real project here, quote unquote real project. So I loaded up a Mayan calendar SVG file into the Lightburn workspace, and uh, I'll just show you the quick engrave. This is, I don't know, 15, 20 times. It was about a three minute engrave, and uh, you can see the rotary turning there, and the result uh, comes out you know, pretty pretty well. It's nice and round, which is exactly what you want. So I'd say success to the ACMR M4 rotary here. Now let's take a look at some of the configurations that you can put this hardware in, and I'll show you five of them here. And the first one is a pretty obvious one. I'll take the chuck off, and what I'm left with is just a basic roller, and you've probably seen these by many manufacturers. You can just drop a bottle or something on and then do your engraving. Uh, you can adjust the rollers in and out for wider or narrower items. 
The second way is to put the chuck back on, but I'll put it on in the opposite direction so it sticks out beyond the edge of the, uh, beyond the outside edge of the rotary. And what that allows me to do is engrave things that might be a bit bigger so they don't hit the rollers. And again, pretty simple idea. But there's another way we can do it. If it's a heavy item, I can remove the extrusion out of the center and I can stick it on the end so it hangs out beyond the, the work. And that means I can put very heavy items on there without tipping the rotary over. Or I can move the extrusion to the other end and I can use things like the end roller uh, and do something like that. Or I can use the double rollers by taking the extrusion off completely and then I can just lay that out uh, further away from, from the rotary itself. It's completely detached. I can adjust the height. And those are just some of the ways that, that you can use this, this uh, uh, rotary tool. And I think it's like they've done a wonderful job here as far as innovation and just kind of flexibility of the design. Building a rotary that's supported by your own lasers is pretty easy and Acmer's done a great job there. But one of the most common questions I get asked is does Rotary X work with my particular laser and it's not an Acmer, for example. So what I wanted to do is push this a little bit further by trying to plug this M4 rotary into a different kind of laser. So what I chose was my Commarker Omni 1 UV laser. Now that one's a bit of a stretch and I actually had to jump through a couple of hoops here. The first one is I needed to change the current on the stepper driver. So what I had to do is actually lift the workspace off the control box and get to the stepper motor controller. I wish they had put that, uh, expose the switches outside, but all I really needed to do is flip one switch to lower the current down to one amp because by default it's 2.8 amps for, for bigger motors. And then you need, I needed this cable and it's got a, a, an aircraft plug on one end and the stepper motor plug on the other. I just plugged it into my rotary here, into my laser, sorry, and I was pretty much ready to go at that point. With the hardware configured, I then needed to go into Lightburn and configure the rotary. Uh, I, I'm using the chuck here and it's reversed, of course. Uh, you can set the, the split size here. I usually set it to one, but I set it to something a bit bigger here. The number of steps per revolution is a whopping 48,000, and that's because they're, they're using quarter steps or something in, in the stepper driver. And after that, I just sent my Mayan calendar over to the rotary, and you can see it working there. It looks kind of chunky because it's using uh, using the, the split of three millimeters, so it engraves three millimeters and then it rotates. But overall, it came out great. You can see the result there. And uh, so this actually works. And, and you know, if you need to know if, if this will work with your Omni 1, it will, but you do have to make that switch, otherwise you'll overdrive the motor. Next, I took a uh, a, a glass. I wanted to just engrave a glass and you can see I'm using a little bit smaller uh, split here. It's I think one millimeter. I'm doing single characters and, and when I did the result I just put my name, my channel name on a glass. Came out great and that solves a lot of problems if you don't have a rotary with the Omni 1 because Lightburn can only correct so much. And finally uh, something a little more challenging. I took a, a, a ring and uh, put that on. I, you can see now I'm using the, the chuck pins there so that I can tighten it up on the, on the inside of the ring. And uh, again, just engraved my channel name and uh, another awesome job. It looks fantastic. So all in all, not only does the M4 work with the Omni 1, the M4 works really well. And, uh, you know, and now I have a, a single rotary that I can use in multiple places. So that's the Acmer M4 Rotary. It's a very nice addition to their product line, but it's also good even if you're not using an Acmer laser. Uh, I did want to summarize this into some pros and cons here. On the pro side, the price is really good at $199. It competes with all the other rotaries that are out there, uh, but this one does have a lot more capability. Uh, next on the list is capability. Uh, I showed you five different ways you can configure this rotary and there's probably more, but basically if you have something that's round and you want to engrave it, odds are good you can make it happen with this rotary. And finally here on the pro side, there's wide support for other laser manufacturers. I use the Omni 1 and I did have to jump through some hoops with the Omni itself, 
But if you have a, a laser, standard diode laser, odds are really good that this will work with your diode laser. Check with Acmer though before you buy. Now, on the con side, there were a couple things here. Uh, there's no way to tilt the chuck short of putting something under under one end of the uh, of the whole rotary assembly itself. Uh, not very convenient. So hopefully, Acmer, if you're listening, you decide to put a, a tilting head on the next one. Uh, if if there's an M5 in the future. Next on the list, I have safety here. This pertains particularly to Acmer lasers, but other lasers may also suffer from this because when you put the rotary in there, you have to lift up the whole laser so the laser itself doesn't hit the rotary. And that means that there's an opportunity for beams that are, that are you know, scattering off the work that you're doing to fly around your workshop. And all that really means is you have to make sure you're wearing safety glasses when you're running this, but, it is a consideration. And finally, the extension legs, and I showed you the two-part extension legs. Don't buy those, honestly. Sorry, Ekmer, but they're just not convenient. If you're putting the rotary in, you have to take your existing short, short legs off and put the longer ones on. It takes about five, 10 minutes to do that. And if it's a five minute job that you're doing with the rotary, then you have to unravel all of that when you're done. It's just not convenient. Do yourself a favor, go to boxes.py, laser cut yourself a, a couple of, well, four boxes that you can put under each corner of the laser. And then it's a two second job to put all those things in there and then run your test and then take them out if you have to. Now I use the Acmer P3 for all of the diode laser work here. And uh, I'll put a video up above here. I did a review on it. It's my most favorite diode laser. It's the one I use in my shop on a daily basis. So if you're interested in, in that one, uh, go watch that video and I'll see you over there. I'll also put a, an affiliate link if you're interested in buying that, as well as the M4 rotary in the description down below. And with all of that, I'll wind down and say get out there, make your world, and I'll see you next time.